Et donc, si j'ai un aller, on retrouve à un café, à un restaurant, on retrouve à Sevel. OK. So again, I would ask if everyone can kindly stay on mute, that would be greatly appreciated. And thank you guys so much for coming. My name is Danielle. I am the Director of Volunteer Engagement here at JDRF. And so not only do we work my team, we work with volunteers across the organization, but we also work in support of the Type 1 community, uh, helping to bring about events just like this tonight. Welcome, Debbie. All right, and so just to get started, on behalf of JDRF, I'd like to invite you guys to our Let's Talk T1D educational series. And we're really thrilled to be able to present you with more information on continuous glucose monitoring and the Dexcom G6 device. In just a moment, our speaker, Gabrielle Schmidt, um, will be speaking for about 45 minutes in a presentation, um, and then we'll open it up for discussion um, to answer any questions that you might have. And just to explain a little bit about this series, um, since COVID-19, we've not been able to safely meet in person. And so to continue the conversations for the type one community, JDRF created the Let's Talk T1D series. And for anyone who uh, this may be the first JDRF event that you're attending, JDRF, we're a global leader working towards an end to type one diabetes. And this is through research, funding and advocacy. And we also support people and families in the type one community from the time of diagnosis um, through helping uh, individuals with type 1 to live better and healthier and safer lives. Uh, just to let everyone know too, each month, the education series, we have a different topic. So do stay tuned for next month. We will be having um, the next session, which is on RDSP with our special guest RBC. And that's going to be on um, March 9th for a disability tax credit and a registered disability savings plan. And then we also host a connection series which is on the fourth Wednesday of each month. And this is a national virtual event. And it's an unstructured opportunity to connect with others. No formal programming, just a, um, an online chat with members of the Type 1 community. If you're interested in either of those, you can visit jdrf.ca for more information on how to register. And just before I hand it over to Gabrielle, a couple of housekeeping and technical items. Um, there is a raised hand button. If you need clarification for anything that's being said during the presentation, you're welcome to use the raised hand. It's at the top of your screen and just looks like a little hand. Um, but we do have a chat function as well. If you have any questions that you want to, um, to ask, please uh, put them in the chat. And after the presentation, we'll try to get to as many questions as time allows. And also, I just want everyone to note that the series are designed to have um, open discussions around type one, and it might paint a very real picture of the challenges, particularly right now, as we're in the winter months during COVID. If you find it too much or overwhelmed, it's completely understood, and please feel comfortable to leave the meeting uh, at any time. The session is going to be recorded, so if you miss a little bit, don't worry, you can always uh, share it or watch it at a later date as well. If we do have any questions that we're not able to get to during this presentation, please don't worry. We will provide um, contact information um, following up so that you'll be able to get answers to any questions that might be outstanding. And so again, very excited to talk to you tonight about the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor. Um, and so I'm going to pass it over without uh, further uh, ado here to Gabrielle, who's a diabetes educator registered dietitian and certified pump trainer with LMC Diabetes and Endocrinology in Ottawa. And Gabrielle has been living with type 1 diabetes for over two decades. Um, she connects with families and children living with type 1 through JDRF and volunteers as well with CHEO um, in Ottawa to help bridge the gap between diabetes care and youth living with type 1 diabetes. Um, and just a quick note too, just before we start, um, Coverage for these devices varies by province by province, so we won't be able to address any issues about um, access here. Um, and also, too, we are only speaking about um, on-label use for products, so nothing about, for example, looping or night scout. Um, and so again, please feel free to put your questions in the chat, and we will try to get to as many of those as we can. Uh, so now I'd like to pass it over to uh, to Gabrielle and. Uh, Welcome to uh, to the session tonight. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Can everybody see Max Domi? 
podcast. Awesome. Great. So thanks so much for the introduction. My name is Gabrielle. This is not me. This is Max Domi. Max Domi is the JDRF ambassador um, and a great ambassador he is. He lives with type 1 diabetes. He is a professional hockey player. Um, and so when I was creating this, this presentation, I was thinking of a title and I was like, what is the title of this presentation? And it came to me immediately. It is a game changer. Continuous glucose monitoring with Dexcom G6 is an absolute game changer. And here is why. Um, so a little more about me, uh, like we said, my name is Gabrielle. I've been living with type one diabetes since the age of nine years old. I am a Chio kid, so I'm from Ottawa. If you know about Chio, that's where I was followed for many years. Um, I pursued a career as a dietitian, certified diabetes educator, certified pump trainer, so all things diabetes I love. And I've been using CGM since 2016. And Max Domi is an athlete. Here I am pretending to be an athlete. I was off for a run with my Dexcom. Um, so let's begin the presentation. These are my disclosures. Okay. So let's think about all of the effort it takes to check blood sugar with a glucose meter. It often interrupts our day and there's so much time and effort that goes into doing one check that is worth one second in the day. I was a chronic glucose tester. I was checking 10, 12, 15 times a day. And I even had a doctor tell me, Gabrielle, why do you check your blood sugar 12 times a day? And it's because we know when we live with type one diabetes, a very unpredictable condition, we need the information to make decisions. Well, enter Dexcom where with very little effort, I get so much more information at my fingertip on my Dexcom app or receiver. So you get your number, the speed as to where the number is going, and the direction as well. So again, with very little effort, you get a lot more information with a simple touch on your phone screen. There are three parts to Dexcom, the sensor, the uh, transmitter, and your smartphone and or receiver. So the sensor is actually applied on your abdomen. And with one simple touch of the button, the orange button with one hand, you apply a tiny platinum filament that actually goes underneath the skin in your fluid where glucose is circulating. The sensor can sense how much sugar is around. It transmits it back to the transmitter. And from there, the transmitter brings it to your phone or the receiver. The sensor is worn for 10 days at a time, but the transmitter is good for three months. So as you change your sensor, you reuse the same transmitter and you put it on your new sensor. And your phone is your phone. And that's what's so practical about this is that you don't need a new fancy device. You'd simply use your smartphone that is compatible with the G6 application. If it's not compatible, you do have the option of choosing a receiver or the Dexcom receiver. So that's also an option there. So very simple three steps here. So the benefit too with a Dexcom is that it doesn't matter if you're an MDI, so multiple daily injections or if you're on a pump. There is one pump that's integrated with Dexcom on the market, but it does not matter if, like I was saying, injections or pump, it all works with Dexcom. All you need is either the receiver or your smartphone and however you decide to deliver your insulin. So it can be used independently with or without insulin pump. You don't need a fancy new device, but certainly if you want that integration, there is that option with the Tandem pump in Canada. So this is what you see on your phone screen if you were to open your app on your phone. So there's lots of information, but it's such good information, it's easy to understand. So if you focus in the middle of your screen, you'll see the glucose level here at 9.4 with a trend arrow. In this case, it's telling you it's actually stable. But you can see on the right-hand side, there are different colors and types of arrows that can also be shown on your screen. So yellow means that you're high, gray is in your zone, and red is below target. You'll also see at the bottom there the graph of the last four hours. So not only your current glucose, but also the last four hours. And the high and low glucose alert are set by you. And that's what determines the colors. If it's going above your high or below your red, that's where the colors come up. On the top right or sorry, top left corner, you have your Dexcom share. So somebody is following you, which we're going to talk about in a second, that will be lit up. And alert status is if, if you have turned on alerts, that means that the alerts will be on. So again, a lot of information, but at the same time, practical, useful information compared to what you would see on your glucose meter, you would just see a 9.4. 
these are different arrows. These are the, the seven arrows that are available when you have a Dexcom. So for example, the straight arrow pointing to your right is the steady, meaning that your blood sugar isn't going to move very much. Whereas you can go up or down and the speed at which depends on the arrow. So slowly going up is on a diagonal, slowly going down is on a diagonal, straight up, straight down means it's going up fast. And of course, two arrows up, two arrows down means it's going up faster, so quite fast. So just keep that in mind. If you have, let's say, a blood sugar of 5.8 with an arrow straight down, that means that your blood sugar is actually going to approach a low blood sugar. So you can use way more um, information to make a decision in terms of your blood sugar. So if you actually kind of switch your phone over on the horizontal, um, your information is actually displayed over 24 hours. So before you just saw the number as it was now in the last four hours, but if you just do a switch with your phone, you can see 24 hours, 12 hours, six hours, three hours, one hour. And if you add events such as I'm eating or I'm stressed or I went for a workout, you can add as much information to give more context to your numbers. And if you decide to add insulin, if you're like an MDIer, you could add your actual bolus that you took. So it gives more context to your numbers. It's not just glucose information, but also what's going on as well. So with a, a simple switch to your phone, you get more information for your 24 hours. So this is the huge bonus with Dexcom or the customizable high and low alerts. This is such a bonus because you are the one deciding what is my low alert and what is my high alert. And certainly you can connect with your healthcare team to make that decision. But think of it this way, right? The idea with a low alert is that we're trying to prevent hypoglycemia in the first place. So setting your low alert to 3.6 may not help you actually prevent the hypoglycemia. So you might want to set it to, I don't know, 4.4, 4.5 to give you a heads up like, Gabrielle, you're going to go low if you don't do something right now. Whereas your high, think of it as what is too high for you? Everyone is very different and we want to avoid alarm fatigue as well. So you need to be realistic with what is a reasonable high that I want to be notified to make a decision. And it's not too aggressive where it's continuously alerting me as well. So certainly making that decision with your healthcare team is great but it's up to you to decide what's your fit for your alerts. There are other optional alerts that you can turn on. It's not necessary. Plus again, we don't, we don't want to overwhelm people with too many alerts, but they're totally up to you. Um, the always sound that you see on the, the first screen there, it means that if your phone is on silent or do not disturb and you say yes, always sound, it means that you'll still get alerts even though your phone is on silent, like at work, for example, or in an important meeting. Um, so that option is there. And again, you have different options there that you can see the low and the high are turned on, the urgent low is turned on, the urgent low, the first one there, that is not optional to turn off. That is a hard setting into the Dexcom app. And there's a reason for that, that's for safety, right? The other big bonus is the alerts schedule. So this can be for a different time of day, for example, overnight, or if on the weekend, you're looking for different targets that make more sense to you, you can totally customize a totally different schedule. Personally, during the day, my alerts are on vibrate because I'm always near my phone. I know that I, if something's going on, I'll have access to it. But at nighttime, I choose the most obnoxious, loud noise possible uh, to actually wake me up in the middle of the night if something were to happen. I'm exaggerating, but I choose my sound to be on so that I actually can hear it as I'm sleeping. So that's how I decided my alerts to be different. But again, the numbers can change as well. So the urgent low suit alert is actually Dexcom users' favorite alert. People love this alert because it really helps prevent severe hypoglycemia. The alert warns you if you're predicted to be at or below 3.1 within 20 minutes. And I like this example because 6.6, .6, if you said on your glucose meter, you would say 6.6, .6, I'm in the clear, I'm gonna go for a walk. But really 6.6 .6 with two arrows down is telling you you are going to be severely in hypoglycemia if you don't act right now. So you can imagine how that is such a game changer when it comes to prevention of not only hypoglycemia, but severe hypoglycemia. So it's a great alarm to turn on. The urgent low alarm, so like I said, this one is not optional, it stays on and you want it on. Again, it's for your safety, but it's the urgent low glucose alarm that senses that your reading is urgently low, you need to act and act now. So that's a really good um, safety feature that Dexcom has for sure. 
So the remote monitoring with the Dexcom follow app. This, again, game changer. I keep saying game changer because everything about Dexcom is a game changer. But this is an example with the Rangoon family where Andrew is practicing his martial arts. And he has his Dexcom with him. And then mom and dad also have access to his readings on their own personal device. So they could be beside him or they could be at home watching TV, but they have access to Andrew's numbers as uh, he's being active. So there's a lot more, um, you know, readily information to be acted upon in case there was an emergency or something along those lines. Um, so it's a really good feature to have on a different device to just have someone check up on you if needed. But the conversation is really important to have within a family to say, you will have access to my glucose numbers, but here are the alerts that I want you to have and some that I don't want you to have. The point is not to always check the other person's blood sugar, but to really only be alerted when there's an emergency and a time to actually be notified something is going on. And having that conversation as a family is key to make sure that you're on the same page for sure. And you can imagine this would be a really good um, tool to have in the middle of the night, right? So if Andrew or if your child is sleeping, um, you have access to their blood sugars without having to go in their bedroom and check their blood sugar. Um, so it's a really good feature to have, especially at nighttime, for sure. Not for just for kids, it's also for adults. Um, so my partner, for example, will follow me on my Dexcom and we have that conversation where, you know, you have access to my blood sugars, but please don't message me every time you see an error going up saying, why did you eat? What did you eat? Right. That's not the point here. And not that he does that. But um, the key here is that as an example, I decided to, you know, go for a longer run one day and I kind of overshot how long I could run for. And of course, I end up in a hypoglycemic event. And my partner had the alert of Gabrielle is low. So, of course, I reached out to him and said, you know, I'm OK, I'm treating. I have my glucose. But he found me and um, he came by with his car and he sat down beside me. He says, are you OK? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. But of course, he drove me home because I did not want to continue my run. <laughs> That's also a bonus. Uh, but you can see in that situation, I was fine. But because he was there, even from a distance, it's such a more comforting experience when I'm having a low and I'm not alone, right? Even though I felt I was alone, I wasn't actually alone because someone was there saying like, how's it going? How can I help? So it's a really good tool to have from a distance within family members and loved ones. So the Dexcom Clarity is actually where all the information from your phone goes into through the magical cloud, right? So you have a website and or you have the Clarity app on your phone as well. So all the information from your Dexcom G6 app goes into the Clarity app automatically and or a website. And if you have a healthcare team that has Clarity, you will get shared and you'll have an invitation where they'll have access to your data if you agree to do so. So it's a lot easier for, especially in virtual care, you see all the information uh, without the patient having to download a single thing. So it's a lot easier for my appointments day to day when my patients are using Dexcom because they're not doing anything. They're just using the Dexcom and I get to see what's going on and it's to bring up conversation, right? It's really a great tool to have that initial conversation of what's going on and how can I help. This is what the app looks like. So for example, you'll see on the left, uh, on the left there, you'll see kind of an overview of what's going on, like the average glucose, the time and range, an estimated A1C. You can choose the timeline. So either like two days, a week, two weeks, a month, three months, it's a really good tool too um, for A1C, right? Whenever you go to an endo appointment, before it's like you didn't know where your A1C was and it can be sometimes anxiety provoking. You're not sure what that number is going to be. Now, if you check 90 days, it tells you exactly what your A1C is and you have more of an idea of what is gonna happen in that appointment and what conversations you can bring up with your physician or diabetes educator, et cetera. So there's a lot more information um, for you to use. The thing that I love the most are the notifications. So you can choose either daily or weekly notifications. I personally choose weekly. Um, and it tells me like every, I think Saturday morning, I wake up to a alert saying your time in range was X and that's higher or lower than the week before. And it's just a little tidbit for me to reflect on and like either I go, okay, or actually use that information and go, oh, I wonder what happened. It's very simple information that I can access and then figure out what can I what can I do differently or 
what should I not change? It's a really good way of just keeping me accountable in a way without having to like download anything. So it's awesome. The best thing that Dexcom has done <laughs> is come up with your best glucose day. I love this because it gives you, you know, like a gold star for saying like, this is your best day. In this case, this person achieved time and range 100%. Not that that's the expectation at all, but imagine getting back that feedback, like look what you did on February 10th, 2021. And you could tell yourself, oh, I didn't do anything. And okay, take it as a win anyways. Or, you know, I actually went for a long walk and I did this and that helped me with my blood sugar. So you can repeat that and see if it happens again. The point is it reflects on your best day so that you feel empowered to make similar decisions or changing a few things to continue getting to where you want to be with your blood sugar. This is the overview report. So this comes up um, for sure in the website. So again, similar, you get your time and range. This is for, let's say a 14 day period. Um, and what I love about Dexcom is that even as a diabetes educator it does some of my work for me because it comes up with the patterns that have been happening over and over again. So it helps me identify patterns um, along with the Dexcom to help the patient or for yourself or for myself looking in this case, you have a pattern of nighttime highs and daytime highs. So let's what's going on at night, what's going on at, during the day. It's just a time for us to kind of dig and see what can we change or what can we do today to help. Um, and of course, it highlights your best glucose day, which again is my favorite aspect of the Dexcom Clarity. And the other thing that I really like about the Clarity, for this sounds a little funny, but the colors, I think it's so great that we're using neutral colors. Other systems might use like red and green. Red is bad, green is good. It's not about good or bad. Diabetes data is data. I don't care how you get it. It could be super high, super low. The fact that we have information to work with, that's what counts so that we can make a difference for that person. So when you look at a glucose log and you see red and green, it gives you a sense of like, ugh, what's going on here? Or it's not, it's not the point, right? So with clarity, you get, you know, softer colors. Yes, there's green, uh, but I think it's a more, less intimidating way of looking at your data. So why use Dexcom the CGM? So there are clinical benefits for sure. So we know that it reduces your A1C regardless of what you're using. You could be on injections, you could be on a pump, integrate a pump. At the end of the day, you will get a reduction in your A1C because you have more information to work with. Reduction of hypoglycemia. This is a big one. Living with type 1 diabetes, hypos are fear-inducing. They're not fun. So not only does it reduce hypoglycemia, but the time spent in hypoglycemia as well and fear of hypoglycemia. So your reduction is certain with the Dexcom. And it increases your time in range. So between 3.9 and 10 millimoles per liter, that is the target range. By using a Dexcom, you're hitting that range more often. And again, it's not to get 100%. That's not the point. The point is to work with what you got and to move in a direction where you feel like you have a better sense of what's going on. So there are other benefits, not just the clinical ones, but at the end of the day, there are no more finger pokes. So I can't tell you how liberating it is from going from 10 finger pokes a day, even 15. As soon as I stopped finger poking, my brain, like that part of my brain just shut off. And it was like, duh, my brain was telling me, that's not something that you're born to do, so stop doing that. And it's been totally liberating by just using a Dexcom. Certainly, if your symptoms are not matching what the Dexcom is saying, you can rely on a finger poke. We're not saying throw out the glucose meter. We're just saying you don't need to use it as much anymore. And there's no calibrations necessary because Dexcom is accurate. The convenience. So certainly not having to lug around a glucose meter and having access to glucose readings with the speed and direction at the touch of a button on my phone is way more convenient. It's discreet and it's again, it's very accessible during the day. More peace of mind. So certainly with the Dexcom follow or just for myself, having my information right there with my alerts, I rely on my alerts to tell me something is going on. If my phone is not going off, I'm not checking my phone necessarily because I know my alerts are keeping me where I wanna be, right? So there's more peace of mind in terms of just having my phone beside me and not having to worry too much and more confidence. So at the end of the day, more information, the better. Knowledge is power. It's there for you to use and it's there to bring back to your healthcare provider and say, look at my data. 
It's so easy to use and it increases your confidence in your type one diabetes management. And this picture that you see here, this is my mom. Um, so a little um, shout out to my mom here. My mom is a pediatric nurse at CHEO. She's been there for 46 years. She took her retirement this year, which is good for her. Um, but little story there. So when I was first diagnosed with type one diabetes, like 22 years ago, um, my mom would drive to my school every lunch hour before lunch. She would check my blood sugar. We would wait 25 seconds together because back in the day, it was a 25 second uh, <laughs> glucose meter. We waited, we would chat for a little bit. She would write down my number in my glucose log book. And then she'd say, okay, have a good day. And then she did it again the next day and the next day and she didn't stop. So I'm just thinking like, oh man, if she only had access to Dexcom back in the day of how much easier her life would have been. But you know, that was the past. And today the technology is here and it's here for us to use and who knows what the future is going to bring. But the point is today we have this technology and it's really um, fascinating how much difference it can make for somebody. And like I said in the beginning, it is a total game changer. So I totally um, am on board to tell everybody about it. Um, it's definitely in your toolbox for sure. So for Dexcom support, there are three um, lines that you can call if you are using the Dexcom or wanting to start the Dexcom. So Dexcom Care is really for CGM training. We have a team of certified diabetes educators on call who are there to support you through your training process. 24 seven technical support. So for those who have problems with their Dexcom, they're awesome. They are there to answer your questions and they're, they're very, very helpful. And then customer service, if you have questions about like insurance or the Dexcom store, that's another number that you can reach as well. How to get started. So you can either access the Dexcom through um, an, or, or, sorry, an order online through the Dexcom store. Um, or you can get insurance assistance by calling that phone number right there. And now our healthcare providers have free samples of the Dexcom. So if your uh, clinic is um, a diabetes clinic, they have access to giving you a sample that includes both a sensor and a transmitter. So it's really there to kind of get you started. And you can either meet with your diabetes educator to get started, or you can call the Dexcom care line to get you started. But ideally that box is made for you to just get the process going and answers all your questions and um, it's easy peasy. So really good that we have that um, for availability now. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions regarding the Dexcom G6. Um, and thank you very much for taking your time tonight to listen to me chat about the Dexcom. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. Um, appreciate it. So maybe for questions, we can uh, do this two ways. Um, again, if anyone would like to ask a question at the top of your screen, you'll see the little raise hand function. Feel free to do that um, or write it in the chat. And we do have a couple questions uh, in the chat that we can uh, begin there. If people are kind of gathering their thoughts. Um, first question that we did have um, is, can uh, the device only be applied on the abdomen? That is a good question. So on-label Dexcom is only on the abdomen. You might see others wearing it other places, but for a Dexcom, um, their label says only on the abdomen. And I'm seeing people shake their heads. So you can talk to somebody else <laughs> about that answer. Um, for children, it is on-label to wear on the lower back, upper buttock for, the, for a child. But for adults, for right now, it is only the abdomen. <laughs> Great. Um, and is Dexcom looking to update the flexibility of alerts or schedule on the Share app? That is a question that I don't have access to in terms of an answer. Um, it's a good question. I think from even from the G5 to the G6, the alert schedule is new for G6. So I don't know what the new Dexcom generations hold, but uh, it's good feedback. So I can ask and get back to you. <laughs> Great. And <laughs> Does the receiver or phone that you're using need to be within a certain range of the Dexcom device itself? Yes, it does. It needs to be within 1.5 meters uh, for it to read properly. Okay, great. Um, and this might be a question that I'm not able to fully speak to, but um, do you know if there are any other, um, will you be involved in any other uh, pump brands such as Med? Will it, like would Dexcom be involved yes. in other pump brands? Working to have the CGM system involved 
um, with numerous brands of pumps? I can't speak to that. But um, yeah, I can't speak to that. <laughs> you know what's a, good, a really good tool? Google. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, and this one here is a little bit longer. And again, um, I'll post it out here. Um, so Catherine uses the G6, amazing. Um, and she goes cross country skiing. And when her skin gets cold, um, there's a sensor error. Um, and so again, I don't know if this is a particular situation that might require a call into a customer support. Um, any, any kind of thoughts around this? That is a good question. Um... I think like any device can be sensitive to temperature. And I know for like insulin pumps, insulin in general, we want to keep it closer to the body as possible. Now the Dexcom is on your body, but I wonder if how many layers are on top of that um, Dexcom, where it is on the body. Those are questions that I would probably ask, um, but certainly if it's reoccurring, then I would contact Dexcom technical support to see what's going on there. But I'm, I would be curious about how you're dressing for that particular cold day. Um, and so does the Dexcom measure blood sugar or does it measure interstitial fluid? And how, if you know, is that related to blood sugar? That's a very good question. So it's measuring the interstitial fluid. So think of it this way, like the blood is in the core of your body and the fluid is on the outside. So they're very closely related, but they're not the same thing. So Dexcom is calibrated so that it's very close to the blood sugar, but it's not actually reaching the blood in your body. The platinum is really just sitting underneath your skin where the fluid is, and glucose is surrounding that platinum filament. And again, very closely related to blood sugar. That's why if you were to check your blood sugar, the numbers are probably not identical, and that's okay. It's measuring two different things. If they're totally off, then that probably requires a calibration and a call to Dexcom technical support. Um, but it's okay for a small discrepancy because they're not measuring the same thing. Okay, great. Um, and so what is the difference between the transmitter and the sensor? Great. So the transmitter is the gray piece. Um, how about I bring up my slide again? Might be easier. Oops. Can you guys see my screen? No, not yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, open chart. Let me just bring it back here. Just because it's better for a visual. Um, voila. Okay, so the sensor, let's start with the sensor. The sensor is actually what's on your body. That's what contains the, tr the uh, platinum piece that's going underneath your skin. So you'll see the applicator right on the screen. It's covering the actual sensor. But if you look on the transmitter side, the gray piece that's laying on top of that white adhesive, that's the transmitter. And that hard gray piece is what gets uh, replaced every three months. And the white bandage that you see, the white adhesive is what you get, is what is gets changed every 10 days. So the gray piece is clipped onto the sensor. Great, thank you. Okay, next question. Does heat affect the readings Dexcom provides? Um, because I have been woken because of dropping blood sugars um, because my site, which is not on the abdomen, has been buried in blankets and is very warm. Once I get up to test, it's not as low as the Dexcom has indicated. Uh, that's also a very interesting question. So heat probably affects how sugar is circulating in the blood. Um, I can't say for sure, like if you put something hot on the Dexcom, it's going to change the reading. If you're laying on the Dexcom, it changes how the fluid is moving and that can change a bit the readings on your Dexcom. Um, and I think, you know, as heat is applied on sugar, um, it may actually disperse the sugar a little more. So I, I wonder if you're having like false or lows. I'm not sure. Um, it's a good question. And again, if that doesn't answer your question, then technical support could probably answer that a little more technical. Um, but it's something to keep your eye out for sure. And also how you're laying on it in bed is also uh, maybe a factor there. Great. Nicole says, great presentation. Thank you. Um, and what are the estimated number differences when the trend arrow is showing three quarters up versus straight up versus double arrows going up? Okay, this is a good question. So rounded, uh, how I explain it to my patients. So an arrow going on the horizontal up, the diagonal, or down diagonal is 
plus two plus or sorry, plus two minus two millimoles per liter so on average. So for example, if I'm 6.7 with an arrow diagonally going on the up, right, add two to that. Uh, straight up is plus four, straight down is minus four, double arrow up is plus six, double arrow down is minus six. And those are rounded values. So someone put in the chat 246, that's pretty much what I use as well. Great. Um, so uh, there's a question here from Miranda, and I'm going to read it out because I believe that you've already answered it, but I just, if there was anything else, Miranda, just let us know. Um, since the sensor should only be applied on the abdomen, being a stomach sleeper, does that have any impact? And I believe you answered that when you spoke to the... Yes, uh, it does. Okay. Um, I am not clear on using the Dexcom uh, with pumps other than the tandem. So, okay, so the idea is that if you're using another pump, like either Omnipod or Medtronic, you can still use a Dexcom, they just don't integrate. So you would have, for example, your Dexcom on your phone or your receiver, and then you can use that information and put that information into your pump in the bolus calculator to get your bolus, for example. So in the integrated pump, the number is automatically populated into your bolus calculator, and for other pumpers, you have to actually put the information into your pump. Great. And how long does the receiver work before needing to be recharged? And is it lighter than the average cell phone? So I think the duration of battery life is depending how often you use it and turn it on and off. Um, I can't, I don't know exactly the, the battery life for a Dexcom receiver. If someone is using it, you can comment. <laughs> you might know more. I don't use the receiver, um, so I don't know exactly that answer. But the receiver is similar weight to a phone and it's smaller actually, it's more square. Um, hi, uh, Danielle and Gabrielle. It's Ryan Saraz here. I'm a territory manager for Dexcom in Ottawa. I was just waiting to uh, save Gabrielle for some of these questions. If anybody had any questions that Gabrielle can answer, I'd be happy to answer some of those if you'd like. I was just checking to see if I was allowed to to join in here. So if there's um, if if that's if that's an option, then I'd be happy to answer some questions that uh, might go that way. I was I know there's a few that have been left hanging. Um, uh, we can go back to some of those, but I'll, I'm here, Gabrielle, if you, if you need Perfect. me to answer. Thank you. Ryan is my lifesaver, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very sure. Then, then, Ryan, since you're here, we can put you right on the spot then if you want. Um, so one that we have is, is the Dexcom G7 coming out soon? You had to start with that one, didn't you? Yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, so Dexcom G7 will be coming out, but uh, no plans yet for uh, Canada. Usually what happens is uh, things get approved in the U.S. first and then we follow. That's usually the, the course of, uh, of approvals, but that's uh, hinging on Health Canada approval. Um, yeah, and I was trying to remember some of the questions that were coming up before that uh, Gabrielle wasn't sure on the answer on. Um, I don't know if do you remember, Gabrielle, were there ones that, uh, that the receiver um, was the heat question and then the battery life of the receiver. Yeah, you answered it perfectly. It all depends on how um, how often the screen is lit up. It takes about three to four hours for a full charge. So it's like a cell phone. The more you have it on, the more it's going to drain. Okay, great. Thank you. And, and I will also uh, preface by saying I'm not able to take uh, technical questions or clinical questions. Those need to be directed to technical support. I see a fair bit in the chat about unique situations for patients. So just in the name of time, I think those are best um, dealt with through tech support and clinical support from the phone numbers that Gabrielle put up, but happy to answer the other ones as well. Great. Um, and so we have the next question here is, do you need to be using the receiver to be able to use the Dexcom Clarity web page? No, if anything, um, the receiver needs to be charged. So uploaded to the Clarity website. If you use the phone, it automatically populates into Clarity website through the cloud. So it's easier if you have your phone because it's automatic. Whereas with this receiver, you have to upload it with a cable. Okay, great. Okay, and this may be again a um, personal situation here. Uh, my 12 year old wears her Dex on her abdomen and she's been getting bumps on her skin from where the sensor has been uh, inserted and is now healed. Um, I think there may be scar tissue from where the sensor was. Will these, a bump, uh, will these bumps affect the sensor readings in the future if inserted on the same spot? So I guess follow up, like have the bumps healed? Um, I think if it's a question of to like prevention of irritation, 
there's a few things that you can do to prevent irritation with a Dexcom adhesive or any adhesive. Uh, one of my personal favorites is using something like Benadryl spray. You spray that on your skin, you let it dry, and it's kind of like an antihistamine in a way to help prevent allergic reactions. And actually, over time, your body gets used to adhesive. Some people have to use it once or twice, and it kind of goes away. But if it's continuing, usually the, the Benadryl spray is a really good start for that. Now, if the, he, the bumps have healed and she puts it on the same spot, that should totally be fine. Like it wouldn't affect the sensor reading at all, but I would probably maybe avoid if there's scar tissue. We don't want to insert anything on a scar. Great. Uh, have patients advised if the insertion is more painful than an insertion of an insulin pump site? That's a very good question. It's painless. I can tell you right now, it is absolutely painless. I mean, okay, I need to, <laughs> depends if you hit a nerve, then like that's inevitable. But at the end of the day, I find it so much easier to launch that sensor into the body. So I would say it's painless. Great. Um, in clarity, um, the one thing that um, I've never figured out is what the coefficient of variate, what is the coefficient of variation? That's a good question. That feature shows you how much variability your blood sugar is going through. So uh, a, a goal for, for a coefficient of a variation is about 32%. If you're higher than 32%, you're having a lot more glucose variability. And if you're lower than 32%, there's less variability. So that information comes into play. For example, if you look at your A1C, if your A1C is, let's say, I don't know, 6.9, but you have a coefficient variation of like 50%, that means that you're having highs and lows, very high excursions throughout the day. And that should be addressed too, right? We can't just look at A1C without looking at other information. So that explains the variability of your blood sugar. Great. On an Apple iPhone, is there any particular version that should be used? So for an iPhone, so if you go to the Dexcom website, there's a compatibility, uh, site that you can actually check based on what you have in terms of an iPhone. Uh, I don't know exactly where it starts off, but I'm pretty sure most versions starting from like iPhone 7 plus have um, the Dexcom compatibility for Apple and for Android, it's similar. Like a lot of our smartphones have the compatibility with Dexcom, but to double check before you decide. <laughs> so there is a website there that you can access that information. Wonderful. And what is standard deviation? That is very similar to the coefficient variation. It's kind of giving you like, this is your average number plus or minus like how many more points to give you the variability. Great, thanks. And so does Dexcom drain the battery on your smartphone quickly because it's getting info consistently from the receiver? Good question. I don't think so. A trick for that, though, is that if you're somebody who always has a lot of apps open, that maybe can contribute to drainage of your phone. Plus, you have to think that all the apps are kind of competing for data. So you want to make sure that you're always swiping up your apps to close them to get the Dexcom to constantly read uh, the, the information. But it shouldn't be draining your phone. Unless you're always on your phone looking at it, right? If you turn it off on, that's how the battery will drain is if it's always on, then your battery will drain. Okay, great. And uh, next question here, I'm not sure if it is known yet, but what are the major changes between the G6 and G7, if that can at all be spoken to? Ryan, take it away. No. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, we aren't able to address any questions about G7 because it hasn't even been approved or even submitted to Health Canada at this point. It's too early to say. Okay. Great. And so then the next, um, there was part of the next question had G7 in it. So I will uh, omit that. But perhaps uh, if you can answer if there is a reason why the sensor can only be placed on the abdomen. That's where it was clinically trialed, right? So when you're in a clinical trial, you have to be consistent across all, all participants. So if one has it on their arm, one has it on their forehead, one has it on their, their leg, that it's not consistent, right? So they chose the abdomen. The abdomen has probably like the most consistent reading of glucose. Uh, so that's why they chose the abdomen there. Um, someone did comment that the arm got approved by Health Canada, but that's not, I can't like for 100% say that, right? So, um, but that's why they say clinically only on the abdomen for now. 
I'll help you out with that one, Gabriel. So yeah, sure. we just recently received approval for the arm. Um, and I think someone mentioned it, it's exactly right. Um, our instructional for use documentation has yet to be updated because this just happened. So um, it's uh, approved by Health Canada for the arm. We just don't have our labeling uh, updated yet, reflecting that. Um, so that's to come shortly. Great. Um, and Stuart's comment, he's written in as a parent of a recently diagnosed child with type 1 who uses the Dexcom 6. The readings and alerts that I received overnight and during the day when they're at school provides me enormous comfort. Can't imagine what diabetes management was like before this when parents would go to their kid's room during the night to, uh, to do a finger prick. Yeah, you nailed it. I think uh, it's amazing how the technology just helps on that regard too, right? So I'm telling you, a finger swipe up on your phone, you have so much more information without having to do all the work behind doing that finger poke. So good, good comment. Great. And so there was a couple comments in here as well, just talking again about uh, iPhone usage, um, that it's between uh, 50 to 70% uh, battery used uh, by the CGM. And I think you addressed that in talking about the different ways mm -hmm. that, uh, that it can be used. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, Malcolm has asked, read the rate of change arrows. Could this? Could you please clarify over what period of time the expected blood glucose change will occur? Let's bring that slide back so that you have a visual. There it is. Can you see that okay? Yep. Yeah. So in the next 30 minutes in this case here, Right, so if it's going up slowly, plus or minus 3.4, 30 minutes, plus or minus five for rapidly. Great. Okay. Uh, does Dexcom 6 share a feature between the child and parent? If so, does it work with the child having an iPhone and the parent, say, having Android? I'm pretty sure, yes. Yes, Gabrielle, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just data, data, right? It's just uh, not even data, it's just connection, internet connection that matters. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter if the child has an iPhone and the parent has an Android or vice versa, if they're just apps that you're downloading. So as long as your phone is compatible with the app in question, um, it will work and therefore follow the child. Great. Uh, and Nicole says, thanks so much for answering regarding the trend arrows. How long does it usually take for a compression load to correct? For a compression load to what, sorry? To correct. Uh, that is a technical question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Brian, do you know? Yeah, Gabrielle, there's no clinical evidence on that to, to say exactly. It's just that the compression against the sensor site will affect um, the reading for the time that it's under compression. Um, a lot of it has to do with hydration levels and, you know, there's so many things involved in that. So um, it, it's one of those things, if that's a constant problem, um, A, that should be addressed with technical support in our clinical team, um, but also just um, finding an area on the body where it doesn't tend to happen as much, um, finding a different spot on the body that, that, that isn't compressed so much. So if you're a stomach sleeper or a back sleeper or side speaker, just be a seat sleeper, then be aware of where the sensor is being placed. Great. I mean, I'll just say, so we do have a couple more questions here. And then, so if anyone does have any final questions, get those into the chat or get your hands up. Um, and so, uh, interesting question here. Can the Dexcom be applied over a tattoo? Um, yes. Just like a, yep, even an insulin pump can do that too. Great. Um, and then John just uh, noted as well, so the battery use on his phone is at 1%. Looks like a bit of variability there. Um, Okay, and is the removal of the sensor easy? I read something that said the filament sometimes breaks off and one needs medical attention to remove it. Does this actually happen? Because it sounds rather scary. <laughs> um, that does sound scary. Uh, I'm sorry for that individual. Um, I've never heard that. I think I've heard stories of someone who knows someone who knows someone, but like I've never personally known a patient myself. The adhesive removal is, so, Part of it is that it's, it's on your body for 10 days, so you want it to stay on for 10 days, but there are ways to remove it without any pain. One trick would be to use like 
baby oil or even just like vegetable oil. That was one way of doing it. Um, you can also buy a product um, like Tackaway, which actually helps remove the adhesive from the body. But honestly, the platinum is, is stuck to that adhesive. Like it should not stick. It should not stay in your body. They come out together. Okay. Um, and are there any revisions to adhesive on the Dexcom? I can't, I don't know that answer either. That's probably for... Yeah, I'll, I'll address that. So um, yeah. uh, nothing recently. Um, a couple, I'm trying to remember back from the years of where the change happened. I would, I would, I'm guessing, and technical support can give a probably better answer on the exact date. I would guess that at two years ago, we changed the adhesive to be less reactive to the skin. Um, do people still have skin irritation problems? Uh, yes. Um, it, anything that's stuck to your body for 10 days tends to, you know, have potential problems. Um, but there are always, always are ways to stop that from happening with barriers and protective wipes. Um, but our adhesive changed a couple of years ago to be less reactive, um, but nothing in the last, you know, short recent. Great. Um, and so comment from Nancy just said for others on the chat and uh, the Dexcom representatives, I just wanted to say that we've always had excellent customer service. Um, like sometimes with technology, if we have a problem, we call and the reps are so willing to help and they're awesome. If there's a problem, they're always very helpful. For sure. That's a great comment. Thank you, Nancy, for saying that. Agreed. Customer service Dexcom is like calling your family. They're, they're there for you. Um, and John just put a comment as well. If you get any reaction to adhesive, uh, your tattoo may lose uh, ink, but many do place on top of tattoos. Um, cool. All right. Do, ooh, does Tylenol or Advil affect the blood glucose readings? Nope, not in the G6. Okay. Um, and then um, here, if this is one that can be spoken to again, I'm not sure. I know it's not going to be in depth in this particular session, but. Um, is there any, um, can you please revisit the possibility of Dexcom working with other pumps in the future, like Omnipod? I'll take Google that. it. Google. Yeah. So <laughs> as far as as far as working with other pumps, we're we're not uh, close to working with any one company. Uh, the idea with it is that you could use Dexcom on any type of insulin delivery therapy, whether that's injections, uh, whether that's on a pump. Uh, the only current pump in Canada that is linked with Dexcom G6 is the tandem pump. That doesn't mean that with Omnipod and doesn't mean that with Medtronic you can't use a Dexcom. You would just be using it on your uh, mobile device and then entering that reading into your bolus calculator. Um, and because you don't have to do a finger poke to confirm, you don't have to you know, do a double, double check on that. Um, Omnipod is working um, on improving their system as well to be working with a new system. A lot of the closed loop systems are using uh, Dexcom sensors because of their reliability and accuracy. So um, whether Medtronic will choose to do that is up to them, of course, but we just make the sensor and whoever wants to work with us is more than willing to, um, more than able to work with us. Okay, great. And so just uh, so everyone knows, I know questions are still coming in. We have about five minutes left, so we'll get to uh, one or two more questions here. And then again, we are providing contact information if anyone has particular situations. The video will be posted on our YouTube um, as well. So if you wanted to revisit anything. Um, so we'll get to a couple more questions here. Um, any supply chain concerns during the pandemic? Um, no. Ryan, you can speak that. Yeah, but no, I... absolutely not. No, we've, uh, we anticipated maybe some at the beginning, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been very well controlled and um, everything's perfectly fine doing, doing fine with supply. Right. And can the Dexcom sensor and receiver go through the airport sensor, the ones you have to walk through? I've been told not to put the insulin pump through the x-ray that scans your luggage or the airport scanner. Um, so the receiver, sorry, I'm just reading the question. So the uh, airport security has two um, two things people get mixed up sometimes with, and one is uh, whether it's an x-ray whether it's the conveyor belt, which is also an x-ray, or whether it's the uh, metal detector. So metal detectors, there's no harm with anything, they're just detecting metal. Uh, where you need to be aware of, and this goes with Dexcom as it does with insulin pumps, um, the x-rays and that full body scanner, you can't be wearing your pump or your Dexcom device in any x-ray environment. So um, just be aware that the conveyor belt where you put your laptop through, your bags going through, that's x-ray. 
and the full body scanner, that's also x-ray. So no Dexcom or comp there, but the metal detector is fine. Great. Okay, and so Catherine still has some questions about, um, and I believe it's the G6 not working in cold temperatures. Does the alteration of interstitial fluid when my skin is cold likely impact it and stop it from working? Or is the Dexcom transmitter not working when it's cold, when she is skiing? Um, maybe both, one or the other. I'm not sure. I think both can be likely. Um, I'm not sure about yeah. the Dexcom transmitter, but right. Yeah, well, I would uh, I defer that one to our technical service um, team because if it is a faulty equipment, then they would uh, look after replacing it and they would do some troubleshooting with you. Um, so that would be to call, again, that's a 24-hour tech support line, so you can call them anytime. Great, great. Okay, and the last question here that we'll take uh, tonight from Ellie. At any point, will supplies be accessible through drugstores, et cetera? Ryan, Gabrielle, is what you want to say? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the short answer is yes, eventually. As of today, no, in any province. Uh, so every province will be a little bit different, uh, depending on, you know, um, availability and, and where, if potentially provincial funding becomes available or whatnot. So yes, soon, one day that the business model will go that way, but as it stands up today, uh, it's directly through either our e-store or calling customer service. Great. Well, I want to say a huge thank you to both uh, Gabrielle and Ryan for um, supporting today and providing uh, the amazing information on, uh, on Dexcom. Uh, really appreciate you joining us today. Um, and as well, uh, please remember, do check out jdrf.ca for um, the next Let's Talk T1D series, RDSP, uh, which will happen in March, the upcoming connection series. Um, and again, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. So contact information will be sent out tomorrow for any questions we couldn't get to for follow-up um, and check out YouTube as well. Um, and just a thank you again to the sponsors of the Let's Talk T1D program, uh, Dexcom, Insulate Canada, Medtrano, Novo Norvidisc, Tandem Diabetes Care, and Ipsamed Canada. Uh, this program wouldn't be possible without their support. And really hope that you found this uh, talk informative and engaging. Um, and thank everyone for sharing their time tonight. Really appreciate it. And Gabrielle, before we go, any last words? Anything uh, thank that you, so you want to finish for, off with? Thank you so much for your participation. It was great. Yeah, have a great night. Thanks, everyone.